What's up guys, Sean here, and today we gotta talk about the March for Our Lives. So ever since Donald Trump became president, there have been a series of marches that have been happening across this country. We have the Women's March, the Science March, the Women's March again, and now the March for Our Lives. Now, despite what you might hear in the media, these marches are all organized by the same people. They're all organized by the Women's March folks. They are not all inclusive as all of these marches pretend to be. They are extremely political and they are all left-wing political. For example, the original Women's March barred pro-life women from marching in the Women's March because I guess you're not a woman if you don't have the same position on abortion as the people who organized the Women's March. And as we're going to discuss a little later, the same kind of thing was happening during the March for Our Lives. However, despite the fact that this was clearly a march for gun control and against Second Amendment rights, this was sold very deceptively. Students were told to march out of their classrooms for 17 minutes, and obviously 17 minutes was meant to represent the 17 victims killed at Stoneman Douglas High School in Florida. Now the reason for this is that prior to the March for Our Lives, they were selling it as a memorial to those students at Stoneman Douglas High School. And the reason this was done is because they wanted to be able to say that people who didn't show up to this left-wing political march were actually bad people who don't care about the kids who died at Stoneman Douglas High School. Now, of course, if you did decide to march or leave class because, you know, high school kids want to leave class, the media photographed or filmed you and said, look at all these kids that were in favor of gun control. So essentially, this march was a representation of what we are seeing in the media all the time since the Stoneman Douglas shooting. What the media has been doing all this past month is basically putting up a select few kids that parrot their talking points 100% putting them on TV so that they can push the gun control agenda that CNN is already pushing. And if you decide that you don't really agree with that agenda, they call you a bad person and say that you don't care about the dead kids because the kids want gun control and the kids were in the shooting. So if you disagree with the kids, you're a terrible person. You're horrific. What's wrong with you? Now, a lot of people have been attacking the shooting as a false flag or attacking these kids as crisis actors. If you're doing that, then please stop because that's exactly what the media wants you to do. They want you to attack the kids on how they look or how they act or their mannerisms. They want you to invent conspiracy theories because the whole point of having a 17-year-old come on TV and talk about guns is to make you look like a bad person for supporting gun rights. I mean, seriously, there's no need to venture into the realm of the absurd. The student population of Stoneman Douglas High School is about 2,700. And out of the 2,700, we're seeing like five to 10 students on TV everywhere. And those five to 10 students parrot the talking points we've already heard on MSNBC and CNN for years. Because these news outlets are choosing to put students forward that promote their agenda, it's not that complicated. You don't need to go into the whole crisis actor thing. If you think it's so impossible that 10 people out of 2,700 agree with the mainstream leftist opinion on guns, then I don't know what to tell you. Instead, what you should be doing and you should be pointing out is that there are other students and other parents who lost children in the shooting that completely disagree with these kids. However, oddly enough, nobody wants to hear from these kids because I don't see them all over TV. That father that I was talking about, I've only seen him once, and that was in the event where Donald Trump was speaking with a lot of victims of shootings from across the country. Because my daughter has no voice. She was murdered last week, and she was taken from us. Shot nine times on the third floor. We, as a country, failed our children. This shouldn't happen. We go to the airport, I can't get on a plane with a, a bottled water, but we leave it, some animal could walk into a school and shoot our children. It's, it's just not right, and we need to come together as a country and work on what's important, and that's protecting our children in the schools. That's the only thing that matters right now. Everyone has to come together and not think about different laws. We need to come together as a country, not different parties, and figure out how we protect the schools. It's, it's simple. It's not difficult. We protect airports. We protect concerts, stadiums, embassies. The Department of Education that I walked in today that has a security guard in the elevator. How do you think that makes me feel? In the elevator, they got a security guard. I'm, I'm very angry that this happened, because it keeps happening. 9-11 happened once, and they fixed everything. 
How many schools, how many children have to get shot? It stops here with this administration and me. It's, I'm not going to. I'm not going to sleep until it's fixed. And it, it stops. We all work together and come up with the right idea. And it's school safety. It's not about gun laws right now. That's that's another fight, another battle. Let's fix the schools, and then you guys can battle it out, whatever you want. But we need our children safe. Monday, tomorrow, whatever day it is, your kids are going to go to school. Do you think everyone, everyone's kids are safe? It ha I didn't think it was going to happen to me. If I knew that, I'd, I would have been at the school every day if I knew it was that dangerous. It's enough. Let's get together, work with the president, and fix the schools. That's it. No other discussions. Security, whatever we have to do. Get the right people, the consultants. It's a, these are our commodities. I'm never going to see my kid again. I want you all to know that. Never, ever will I see my kid. That's how I want it to sink in. It's eternity. My beautiful daughter, I'm never going to see again. And it's simple. It's not, we could fix it. And he had one simple demand. He said, fix the schools and then fight out gun control later. But the first thing we have to do is make sure nobody can get into the schools with a gun. And the reason you're not seeing him all over the news or other students that are pro-gun and actually going and meeting with all these congressmen, trying to convince them to put something in a bill that everybody can agree on, is because of the obvious selection bias of the left-wing media. The left has been forwarding the idea that there's a school-to-prison pipeline for years. That when you put armed security guards or metal detectors in schools, you're training the kids for a future life in prison, and that's immoral, and it's very psychologically damaging. So it shouldn't surprise you when a parent or student says, hey, I want more than one security guard for the entire school, and one that would actually, you know, be inside the school or go inside the school and not hide behind an adjacent building. It's not surprising when the media all of a sudden lose that guy's phone number and you never hear from him again. There's no need for all these conspiracy theories. It's not that hard to figure out. It's just called selection bias. But anyway, the march happened. We heard all the standard anti-gun talking points. Democratic congressmen and senators stood behind 16-year-old kids as they said things that were just blatantly not true about firearms. You had liberal cities and school districts like in New York City just allow the kids to walk outside freely without any consequence. You had conservative school districts threaten really harsh punishments or bar the students from leaving the school altogether. Both these policies are completely ridiculous and stupid. First of all, it's unconstitutional to punish these kids more because they're doing a political protest. Like you can punish them for being truant, but you can't add additional punishment for protesting. New York City also messed up because they said that the students can leave completely without consequences. So what that ends up meaning down the line is that if students wanna leave for a different protest, maybe a protest that the left-wing mayor of New York City doesn't agree with, they won't be able to punish them for that since they already set a precedent that you could just walk out of the school for political reasons. And by the way, it's not a grassroots protest when the teachers let you leave the school or encourage you to leave the school. It's clearly something organized. I actually did a video on indoctrination in Philadelphia schools. And one of the organizations that I referenced, the Working Educators, which is an organization that crafts curriculum for the city of Philadelphia, had the freaking march on the front page of their website. We heard a lot of feelings take priority over facts. For example, everything that you've been hearing about the AR-15 is completely absurd and ridiculous. Ridiculous. And it's all based on the biggest thing working against the AR-15 is that this is a gun that looks scary. We've heard a lot of people say that it's ridiculous that it's harder to buy a pistol than an AR-15. You know, because the AR-15 clearly more dangerous than any handgun. I mean, as long as you don't look at any data and you just look at the guns, the AR-15 looks way scarier. So it must be way more dangerous, right? Nope. Turns out there's only about 250 to 280 homicides a year from all rifles total, not just the AR-15. And the vast majority of the around 10,000 gun homicides in the United States are committed by pistols. So when somebody tells you that the AR-15 is more dangerous than a handgun, that is entirely based on how they feel about the AR-15 and it's not based on any of the facts or any of the data. Handguns are way easier to conceal, they're used in the commission of way more crimes, they are much cheaper than an AR-15, and you are way more likely to be shot by a handgun than any rifle, let alone the AR-15. There was a lot of vitriol against the NRA, and honestly, that's the part that I really don't understand about the march or any of these gun control advocates. What does the National Restaurant Association have to do with mass shootings or firearm deaths? I'm kidding. I, I I know it's the other NRA. Of course, all the vitriol and accusations against the NRA are completely unwarranted. The only NRA member to be involved in a mass shooting that I can remember 
is Stephen Williford, who was an NRA instructor who actually stopped the Sutherland Springs shooting. Another guy weirdly that you don't see on TV, he actually ran out of his home barefoot with his AR-15 and confronted a guy who just shot up a church. I mean, honestly, just because Williford risked his own life to confront a shooter who was attacking his local church, th that does make him a hero. He's still a member of the NRA. The bad NRA, not the Restaurant Association, the Rifle Association. That's that's the bad one. And he was using AR-15. Only scumbags use that weapon. So, I mean, just, just, well, he, he doesn't exist. Get, get him off the screen. Now, of course, Williford acted incredibly heroically, but he's a member of the evil organization and he was carrying the tool of evil. So we can't do positive stories about him. We can't interview him and ask him how he feels about guns. However, the absolute best example of political bias in the march is that a kid was actually threatened with arrest for coming out and marching but holding up a sign that said, guns don't kill people, people kill people. No, you don't. Yeah, we do. On the Policy Supreme, Supreme Court. 505 says you cannot. Why? What do you think? I don't want to get 24 hours. I'm going to go stand outside then. And I want to stop tonight. Yes, so Obviously, the principal here was clearly upset. I mean, the nerve of that kid to bring a political sign to a protest. I mean, honestly, what does he think protests are all about? Exercising your free speech, expressing your political opinions? Stupid kid. So yeah, that pretty much sums up what I think about the March for Our Lives and the media coverage around guns over this past month. What I think is important to remember and something I hope that you guys get out of this video is that often there are times where what you're seeing isn't actually important. What's vastly more important is what you're not seeing and why you're not seeing it. This is the end of the video. You guys know the drill. Till next time.